We're here at the World Telecommunication Development Conference 2014 in Dubai in the United Arab Emirates and I'm very pleased to be joined by Mr. Marco Abiso, who is Cyber Security Coordinator for ITU. Hello. And Mr. Aaron Boyd, who is Chief Strategy Officer for ABI Research. Gentlemen, thank you very much for thank being you. here today. Thank you. Now, we're going to be talking about the Global Cyber Security Index. It's known as GCI. It's a joint initiative launched by ITU and ABI Research to measure countries' levels of cyber security development. Mark, I'd like to start off by asking you the first question. Why is it important to measure a country's capability levels in cybersecurity? Thanks for the question, Max, and good morning to all of you. So, um, it is, uh, it is uh, very, very important for the ITU to, first of all, uh, uh, partner with, uh, with the private sector, with the industry, because uh, we are seeing that while we are a global platform for dialogue, of course, we rely a lot on, uh, on partnership with the industry in order to get added value and to get uh, fresh data that is coming from, from the market and is coming from, uh, let's say, from, from the ICT environment. Now, the, this partnership is, uh, is quite, quite strategic for us because uh, through the uh, elaboration of the GCI, we have managed to, and we are managing to, uh, let's say, get a little bit more understanding of the level of preparedness. Now, this is uh, uh, of a fundamental importance of the country, the countries, because uh, they will be able to really understand what, uh, what is the, the, the threat landscape at the national level, uh, more related to the policy le the making development, to the, to the capabilities that are there, to the level of capacity building that they have, and overall to the level of awareness that they have. So as the ITU, and specifically ITUD, is the, let's say, if you want, the part of the ITU that is dealing with building capacity, uh, we are seeing this as a mechanism to, uh, let's say, allow the countries to understand the, the level of readiness at the national level, but also to compare their level of readiness with the other countries in order to learn and to improve their overall cybersecurity. Aaron, can I ask you, how does the Global Cybersecurity Index work and, and how do you collect the data? Well, first let me talk about the importance of this partnership. Uh, ABI Research has a long 23-year tradition of, uh, of fantastic research in, in the telecom sector and uh, over the past few years on cybersecurity. But we needed a partner like the ITU in order to reach, uh, to, to develop an index that's on, the, on a global scale. Uh, ITU has those contacts and connections, and uh, and the the ITU itself, if I could explain briefly what it is and it is not what it is not, um, the the GCI is a, an indicator of readiness, the willingness of a country to uh, to take the necessary steps to perfect, protect its critical infrastructure, uh, to uh, to put legal measures in place. Uh, to, to look at child online protection and, and, and other kinds of policies like that. Uh, it's not a measurement of, uh, of, of technical expertise, uh, uh, per se. It follows the uh, global cybersecurity agenda. Uh, there were five pillars that included legal uh, aspects, um, various uh, national policies, uh, technical aspects. And so uh, we cover all of those areas. Uh, and then uh, out of that, uh, when a country responds, we develop a, a weighted index, um, just like any of the other indices that, uh, that, you see, uh, that you see being produced by the ITU. And Marco, how is GCI impacting the ITU and what are the overall benefits we, mm -hmm. we might be able to see? Yeah, so um, through, through this partnership uh, and, and I would say through also the uh, cooperation uh, and the close collaboration that we have with the member states and with the other international organizations and the private sector, we really aim at uh, building uh, uh, this kind of a platform for uh, exchange of best practices, first of all, but also to, uh, as I said before, to instigate this process of, uh, of building capacity. Uh, now, from one side, the GCI uh, will be able, as Aaron was mentioning, will be able to capture a little bit the level of readiness, okay? But uh, the secondary and even more important result is that we'll be able to, uh, uh, let's say, facilitate the understanding from the countries on their level of readiness and their positioning within the global environment. 
Uh, and this is strictly linked to the fundamental issue that we have on cybersecurity, that there are, uh, it's, it's a global issue, it's not something that can, can be confined at the national level. So uh, as soon as we approach this at the, uh, I mean, uh, uh, in a global way, yeah, uh, and we try to have a global understanding, of course focusing bot through a bottom-up approach on the national level, we will automatically give the possibility to the countries to measure uh, their level of readiness, to understand what is happening on, uh, let's say, on at, at, at the other, I mean, in the other countries and in the other region, but uh, more importantly, to uh, really redefine or possibly improve or shape the policies and, uh, let's say, the capabilities that are, that are already in place or they need to be put in place in order to achieve that kind of a global cultural cybersecurity. In doing so, uh, of course, there will be then a, a whole process of, uh, uh, let's say, internal coordination at the national level with the stakeholders that are the key actors that are already there, but also in terms of linking up to the organization that are already present at an international environment, to the private sector and to the United Nations, if you want, but also to the region an organization in order to instigate this process of cooperation. For us, this is the most important, the most important value that we can provide through a mechanism like the GCI. And finally, Aaron, can I ask you, can you give us an update of the data that's been collected so far and uh, what are the next steps? Sure. We, we've received responses from 42 countries already. There's another 16 that, uh, that have indicated that they'll be uh, responding shortly. We've released the results of the Arab states region. Uh, in, at, we did that in uh, last October it's at ITU Telecom World. And we're planning on re releasing results of the Africa region on May 14th uh, at the, uh, the council session. Great. Let's uh, hope that this, this succeeds and, uh, and, and goes on from strength to strength. Thank you very much indeed for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you to you. And thank you for watching.